Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Okay, a few things while Zoom is pulling everybody in. So this class is as interactive as you want it to be. If you don't want to say anything, you don't have to say anything. No one can see you. No one can hear you. No one can even see your name. Like you're totally safe, totally private, totally confidential. But if you'll look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see two little text bubbles that say Q&A. So if you have a question or a comment or you want to answer one of my questions, that's where we will do that. You can just um, drop down into the Q&A and put it in there and I will address your questions. I'll speak to anything. And that's the other thing that I want you to know. Anything goes, okay. You can bring anything to the table. You can say anything. There's nothing too big, too small. It's all important. It all matters. I'm going to pull up my other zoom account right here. So in case someone logs in to the other zoom, I can take care of them. <sighs> Technology is too smart for me sometimes. Okay. So far, so good. All right. So I am Heather Flake and I'm so happy to be here. I am here on behalf of Life Coach University, and this is what we call a pay it forward talk. So obviously you didn't pay anything to be here. And so this platform at Life Coach University, the whole mission is to get coaching to millions more. We want people to be able to experience the power and the amazing, the amazingness of coaching. And so one of the ways we do that is through these pay it forward talks. So if you go to lifecoachuniversity.com, you will see lots of different coaches that are teaching classes on all the topics under the sun from weight loss to, um, like career coaching mindset goals, you name it, it's available. So you can attend any of these classes. And then we just ask that you pay it forward in the world in whatever way you see fit. One of the best ways to do that, this is just a suggestion, is to tell people that Life Coach University exists, that these materials and classes are available. So it's a really amazing mission. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. Okay, so how we are going to roll is we're just going to jump right in here. I'm going to be teaching you about the antidote to resentment. But a little bit before we get started, I would love to hear from you. Put this in the Q&A again. I'm not going to say your name out loud. This is, you're totally safe, okay? This class is fun. You're safe. Don't, don't be afraid. But I want to hear from you. Why are you here? Why did you come to the antidote to resentment class? And what are you hoping to get from today? Tell me that. Making... Um, you can pop in the Q&A and tell me that. The other thing I want you to know, full disclosure, I feel resentful often, okay? There is nothing special about me. Just because I do this work and I'm a coach does not mean I'm not human. I feel resentful. Why do you think I'm teaching this class? Because literally, I think this was last week, I had this experience where I was so resentful. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then I just had this light bulb moment where I feel like I found the antidote. And, and it was so helpful that I was like, dude, I got to share this with the people. Okay. One of our friends says, I wake up full of resentment. Why did he do that? Why did he say that? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Totally makes sense. Something we definitely do as humans, right? It's like, we're always judging ourselves, but if you're married and you have a partner, we're always judging them too. And we're always thinking that they should be different than they are. So I'm going to spoil it for you right now. Not spoil you. You signed up, you came the antidote to resentment is talking. It's sharing, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm perceiving. And because I'm thinking and I'm feeling these things, I'm starting to feel really resentful. Because let me let me just share a story to illustrate this. I think this illustrates this very well. So last week I was in the kitchen. My kids have been really sick. Probably like I'm talking to a lot of people that that is just the case for everyone. Everybody's been so sick this year. So my kids were sick again. They had high fevers. They were not feeling good. And you guys know how it is when kids are sick, when you're sick, you're grumpy, like everything sucks. So I was holding my son and he was upset and he was grumpy. And I was trying to, well, trying nothing. I was making dinner with one hand. I'm like stirring stuff and trying to get things on the table and trying to tell my other kid to like clean up the room. Anyways, I was feeling really chaotic. I felt very overwhelmed. And then my husband walks in and he says to me, and he has this look on his face. He's like, Hey, I'm going to ask you something. And I was just like, Oh, I knew it was going to be bad. I'm like, 
Could you not? And he says, hey, what do you want for your birthday? I was just like, are you kidding me right now? Like, what do I want for my birthday? I want to never cook dinner again. I want you to help me. I want my kids to stop crying. I want my kids to not want me so bad. Like, anyways, in that moment, I felt really resentful. And I started having all of these thoughts of like, why me? Why do I always have to be the one that misses work when the kids are sick? Like, what's up with that? Why do I always have to be the one that makes the food for the people? Why is that my job? Why am I the one that Brooks wants when he doesn't feel good and he's grumpy? Like, why does he always want me and nobody else? Why, 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 why? And I'm just feeling like this is so unfair. I'm like, all you have to do is work. And then you come home to a hot meal and a hot wife. And like, what is this? And I was, I was really resentful anyway. So in that moment, and he asked me like, Hey, what do you want for your birthday? I was just, I was really short. I was pretty cold. I was just like, I don't know. I don't want anything. And, and that's the thing. I was just like, I don't want anything. I want you to get me something just because you feel like you have to get something. And also in my head, I'm like, this is the first time you're thinking about this. My birthday is in like three days. Really? So I'm just like super, super upset. I'm resentful. So that happens. And you know, like, I don't feel good about it, but I'm just, that's definitely what happens for me in the moment. And then a few minutes later, I come into my room. I, I was coaching, I was working that night. And so I came into my room to like, put some mascara on or something look like I had made it out of the cave and he came back in and I, it just came to me. I was like, Heather, just answer the question. Right. So as soon as my husband walked in the room, I was just like, Hey, I thought of two things that I want for my birthday. And I just told him the things. And then this amazing thing happened. All, all of just like the tension and the chaos and the weirdness I was feeling between him and I just like dissolved. I didn't feel resentful anymore at all. I was just like, oh, you were just asking me a question. You were not, you were not in there trying to attack me. Your goal was to not make me upset. You were not trying to communicate that, hey, this is the first time I've thought about this, right? Like I extracted all of, all of this meaning from him asking me a very simple question in perfect English that I understood. And it was just this moment where I was just like, oh, oh, I can just answer the question and then I'm not going to feel resentful anymore. And it really did. Like it just changed the whole tune of our evening. So that's kind of what I, what I'm talking about. And I'm going to give you another example where that was not the case. Okay. So th this is not linear. This is not a perfect solution, but I think so often when we feel resentful, we, we aren't saying the things we aren't talking about why that is. And so the resentment builds and builds and builds, but also we just sweep it under the rug. And then our rug is like sky high with all the things we're resentful about. And at some, some point, maybe that, maybe that breaks, maybe it's an explosion of, I'm mad at you for all of these things, even things that happened years ago, or maybe that results in just total disconnection. Maybe that results in separating. Maybe that results in a divorce, like who knows, right? It could, it could lead to lots of things, but when you don't deal with resentment, resentment grows. I have, it's, it's this very similar line of like conflict. We hate conflict. We don't want to do it. But when you don't do conflict, you build more conflict. You create more disconnection instead of talking through it, working through the conflict, which decreases the conflict and increases connection. Does that make sense? So literally the antidote to resentment is communication. And I know that you do not want to hear that. And I'll just be very honest, communicating when I first got married, I was a really, really bad communicator. But hello, like I didn't know I was going to be bad at that. I'd never been married before. In my family, we didn't talk about things. We didn't talk about our feelings. We didn't talk about what was going on. If someone was upset, they never like said why or called it out. It was just like slamming doors and I'm pissed. And then a couple of days later, it was like, okay, I think, I think the coast is clear. I think all is okay again. You know? So... Today, I'm going to give you some tools. I'm going to talk you through like how to get to this point where you're like, Hey, I feel like I can come and I can share and I can talk about why I'm feeling resentful. But if anything else, I just want you to know right now that the, the serum to help deflate and dissipate and make resentment go away is communication is to talk about it. There's no other pretty way to put it. I'm so sorry that this is what it is, <laughs> but, but it really is really good news because you can own that. You can be in charge of that. All right. 
Okay. Let me scroll up through my notes here. So I'm not missing anything. Okay. So now I want you to tell me where do you think resentment comes from? Joking. Where does resentment come from? My friends, tell me that. And you can just think of your own life, right? You're here because you feel resentment sometimes in your marriage and you don't want to, right? Nobody wants to feel it. But that's the other thing I want you to know. It's completely normal. You're supposed to feel resentful sometimes. Anytime two humans get together and they're like, hey, let's do life. Let's be one. Let's be a unit. Let's be a family. Negative emotion is totally inevitable, right? You're not going to be on the same page. You're coming from different families, different backgrounds, different ideas, different dreams, different perspectives. There's always going to be a clash there. And it's supposed to be, it's not a problem, right? So I also want you to think about, okay, when you do feel resentful, what are you, what are you making that mean about yourself? Are you making it mean that you're not a good wife? You're not a good husband. This isn't a very good marriage. Maybe you picked the wrong person. Like what meaning are you attaching to that? And I want to just offer that, of course you feel resentful. Sometimes I'm going to show you why you're feeling that. And you're, you're going to be able to leave with some understanding. Okay, so let me clear this Q and A. Um, someone says my resentment comes up when he doesn't do something for me. Yeah, same. That's pretty common for me as well. It's just like what the heck, right? Someone else says feeling overwhelmed. Right? Totally, can totally agree to that. You feel so overwhelmed, like all the things are your job. It's kind of interesting. I put this question just out on my Instagram, like, Hey, what makes you feel resentful in your marriage? And that's what someone said. Like, I just feel like I do all the things and it's not noticed and it's not appreciated. And then I feel so resentful. And I think that's a common thing, especially for women to feel right. So, but here's something that I want to point out to you. I am going to show you, I'm going to introduce you to the model Look at this fancy paper. My cute little whiteboard is no longer with us. It has perished and not been replaced. So tune in here for a second. Okay. I'm going to walk you through this five-step process, which is called the model that's developed. It was developed by Brooke Castillo from the life coach school, but basically this is how the world works, but this is a really helpful tool to help us understand where resentment actually comes from, what's causing it, what it's getting us, all that good stuff. All right. So circumstances are the facts. Circumstances are things that are just happening in our life all the time that we don't necessarily have control over. So for example, when you step on the scale and you see that number, that's a circumstance or Joe Biden being the president of the United States circumstance. When I woke up this morning and it says it's going to be 81 degrees outside circumstance, right? But then we always attach meaning to circumstances. So Joe Biden is the president of the United States. And then my thought is he's an idiot or he's crazy and he doesn't know what he's doing or, oh my gosh, I love him. That was such a great choice. Whatever. We always have thoughts about our circumstances or same with, with your weight. You stand on the scale, you see a number and you think, oh my gosh, I've really let myself go. I'm out of control. I'm so proud of me, whatever, right? Anytime there's a circumstance, you are going to have thoughts about that. AKA a sentence in your brain. That's a thought. Thoughts my beauties create feelings. Okay. So this sentence in your brain of I'm out of control. I've let myself go. This is so hard. I don't know who I am anymore. Those thoughts create feelings in your body. A feeling is a vibration in your body, right? That's caused by a sentence in your brain. Our feelings drive everything we do. So anytime you do something or you don't do something, it's being fueled by an emotion, right? I shut down and I tell my husband, don't even worry about it. My birth, I don't want anything for my birthday. I'm acting cold, you know, whatever, because I'm feeling resentful. I'm feeling annoyed, feeling like he doesn't care. So actions, the things we do, and also the things we don't do, right? I don't communicate. I don't answer the question because I'm feeling resentful. Feelings drive our actions, the things we do or we don't do. And then our actions create our results, right? What we get, what we are able to create and have is all based on the actions we do or we don't take. Okay. So looking at this, 
pop back in here and we'll use your, your examples. So you can see this model in action, but look at this. And if you know the model or you've worked with me before, don't spoil it. Where would resentment go in this situation? I mean, in this model, where do you think we would put resentment? Is resentment a circumstance? Is it a thought? Is it a feeling? Is it an action? Is it a result? Where would we put this guy? Oh, I got to close this box. Okay, friends, listen to me. Resentment is a feeling, right? It's an emotion. So I have amazing news for you. You think that you feel resentful because of this circumstance, right? So, so like from my example, a husband comes in and asks me what I want for my birthday. I think that's what's making me feel resentful, but that's not the case, right? We do not live in a world where we are at the effect of our circumstances, meaning just because something happens, we have to feel a certain way or we have something has to happen as a result. No, this circumstance husband comes in and says, what do you want for your birthday is neutral. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just a fact. It's just what happened. It's just words that people said. Those are also circumstances. Anything someone says to you, things that have happened in the past, we put them in the circumstance line. When husband says that, and then I feel resentful. What's there's always something happening in between. There's a thought, my thought of, are you kidding me? This is the worst time ever. I do everything by myself. You haven't even thought about me yet. My birthday's coming up, right? It's all of those things that I'm thinking those sentences in my brain that make me feel that resentment. Does that make sense? Devin coming in and asking me a question does not create resentment for me. That's, that's not actually possible. It's the meaning I attach to, to that circumstance that makes me feel the resentment. And then because I feel resentful, I don't answer the question. I give him the cold shoulder. I don't ask him, Hey, could you stir this pot? Could you put some dishes on the table? I'm just, I'm super closed off. I'm annoyed. And then the, the result that I create for myself is I'm disconnected. I'm angry, right? Like I just create this, this scenario where I, I close myself off to help and to connection and to working with my partner. Like I, that's not even an option anymore because of my actions, right? Now, here's the thing. When we see this, we never use this information to beat ourselves up because what I want you to see is it totally makes sense. You want to know why you feel so resentful? because all of the thoughts in your brain, because of all the things that you're thinking. Let me give you some, some more of these that maybe this resonates with you. Um, let me find him. This isn't fair. This is not fair. He should, whatever. He should notice what I do. He should be more caring. He should be more romantic. He shouldn't spend so much time at work. He shouldn't be on his phone so much. Or he should. He should help me way more. He should notice how amazing I am. He should give more time to me. Whatever. Why does this always happen to me? Or even that. What really, when you when you have a thought, you don't want to make it a question. We always just make it a, a sentence. That's not a question. <laughs> right? Just like, this always happens to me. I always do everything. We always do everything that he wants to do. Our whole life revolves around him or her. She has all the say in this relationship. Do you see it? It's those things, that thinking, those stories that create so much resentment for us. And then, then we're so confused as to why we're not being very nice and we're not having a lot of communication and we're not super open. Hello, of course you're not, right? The result of thinking that way is resentment. You're going to feel like when you feel resentful, you're going to be disconnected from yourself, from your spouse. Then you're going to be upset for the way that you acted. It's kind of this whole chain reaction. But instead, I just want you to see this and go, oh, yeah, of course. LOL. Of course I'm doing that. So right now, I want you to identify your greatest hits. What are those thoughts that you tend to think or, and it's, and it's a part of, maybe it's a story in general. I have lots of stories that the end result really is just resentment, 
right? I have things that I tell myself or things that I believe about myself, my marriage, my spouse that create resentment for me. And as long as I continue to keep playing those songs to keep bumping that track, I'm going to feel the same way. So just for you, I want you to identify your greatest hits. What are the things that you think that continually create resentment for you, right? Because hear me out. We think that it's husband. We think what husband is doing or what husband is not doing is creating our resentment. But this is the best news ever. Your husband doesn't have that much power. It's this guy. It's these thoughts. What what you are making the circumstances mean are creating that resentment for you. That's the other beautiful thing about this model. The circumstance we can't control, right? Like you can't control your husband. You can't control your wife, what they do, what they don't do. But you're in complete control over what you're going to choose to think, which is going to cause how you feel, which is going to dictate what you do, which is going to create what you get. So I think it's also amazing to recognize like all this part, the thought, the feeling, the action, the result, you get to pick all of that. But we're never really taught that. We just kind of think that we are at the effect of other people's actions. And if they don't help us or they don't notice how great we are, then we just have to feel resentful. And that totally sucks, right? And that just leaves you so powerless. So I want to hear, tell me, give me these juicy thoughts. What are your greatest hits? What thoughts are creating resentment for you? It's just like someone said this earlier, but why did he do that? And you would just put what he did, right? Instead of it being a question or he said this, but those are the circumstances. And then you have a thought of probably like, he should not have said that, or he doesn't care about me. He's so insensitive, whatever, right? Someone else is saying my resentment comes up when he doesn't do something for me. Okay. So that thing he doesn't do excuse me, you can look at that and ask yourself, like, is that a fact? Did I ask him to do something? Did he say he was going to do something? Like you want, you want to get the specifics. You want to get really clear. And then even overwhelm, right? Overwhelm too is a feeling. So we would put overwhelmed right here. I feel really overwhelmed, which is completely legitimate. Resentment, completely legitimate. The way that you feel you guys is so legit. And it's, it's totally um, well, there's a word I'm looking for that's escaping me, but of course you feel that way. It makes sense. And I am not telling you that you shouldn't feel that way. This is the human experience. Sometimes you're just going to feel resentful, but today I want you to recognize that, oh, I'm feeling resentful because of what I'm thinking. But then the next step is, you know what? I'm going to share that because a lot of times, like I feel resentment. I had another experience this, this weekend where I did, I, I felt hurt and I was upset and I had this whole story about it. And it took me several days before I could just be like, dude, listen, this is what I'm thinking. And I'm going to, and I'm going to get to this part in a minute in talking about how to show up from when you, when you go to communicate, when you go to apply the antidote, how we want to do that, how we want to show up. Because if you show up to this conversation and you're just pointing fingers and you're blaming, and this is your fault and you make me feel this way, probably not going to be that helpful. And the truth is nobody can make you feel anything. Circumstances can't make you feel something. There's circumstances. The things we think about circumstances make us feel how we feel. But again, I'm not saying you shouldn't feel that way. So even like our friend said, I feel overwhelmed. You would put overwhelm in the feeling line and then ask yourself, what am I thinking that's making me feel overwhelmed? And maybe it's that version of, I do everything by myself. This is really challenging. Um, I feel alone. I feel like I don't, I, I don't have the support that I need. Right. And then you can just look at that. Okay. When I feel overwhelmed, what do I do? Most of the time we call overwhelm like an indulgent emotion. When we feel overwhelmed, what do we do most of the time? Shut down because we feel so overwhelmed. So the model is just really helpful because it helps you to take ownership of yourself. As humans, we're always just like sitting here with our clipboard, making notes of like what they're doing wrong and what they should do better and what they should do differently so that we could feel better, right? That's just a really hard way to go about it because we're not in charge of them. We don't get to dictate how they're going to act, how they're not going to act. So it's way more powerful to just be like, okay, these are the things that are happening. 
these are the circumstances in my life. Who do I want to be? How do I want to think about it? And, and how you think about it is going to have bearing on all the rest of this. And that's the thing you get, you get to choose. You can think however you want to think about the circumstances of your life. Okay. Someone says greatest hits. He is lazy. He holds me back. He didn't want to have a family. Yeah. All right, my friend. So you're going to put those right here. And that's, that would be three different models, right? So right here, for example, you could put, he is lazy. And then the circumstance, this part is really important. What's the fact? Okay. Like where is not, not even where is this thought coming from, but what circumstance, what fact is happening when you think this thing? So maybe, so maybe it's, it's one thirty and husband is sitting on couch, right? Or husband is looking at phone during dinner, whatever. Like you got to put something factual, something that everyone in the world would agree upon, something you could prove in a court of law. And then it's like, okay, he is lazy. When you think he is lazy, how does that make you feel? When you feel that way, how do you act? What things do you do? What things don't you do? And what's the result of that, right? So, and you can do that with all these. He holds me back. He didn't want to have a family. You can put all of those things in there and see how are you showing up? What results is that creating for you? Because you are the only person that you can control. You can't control your spouse. I say this all the time. If I could teach you how to do that, I would do that and I would be filthy rich. But it's not a thing. The only person you have control over is you. Okay. Someone says, sorry, my throat is so dry. My husband says that I am fake. He can see that I'm upset. I will try to smile to make things better. We argue that he calls me fake. All right. Amazing news for you right here. Circumstance you put husband says I'm fake. What do you think about that? Let's talk about it right now. Tell me when your husband says you're fake, what do you think about that? What's your thought? When your husband says, hey, you're fake. You're fake. I think you're fake. What do you think when he says that to you? What's the thought? Eh. He doesn't appreciate that I'm trying to make things better. Okay, so the thought, that's the thought, gorgeous. He doesn't appreciate that I'm trying to make things better. Okay. When you think that, how does that thought feel? When you think he doesn't appreciate that I'm trying to make things better. How does that, how does thinking that make you feel? What emotion comes up for you when you think that? And you guys, this might be something that you're not used to doing, right? This isn't necessarily something you're taught. Well, it's definitely not something you're taught in school, but we never really think like, Hmm, what's happening in my body? Like, how do I feel about this? It's more just like, we, we think he, he doesn't appreciate that. I'm trying to make things better. We think that's the fact, right? And that's why we get so upset sometimes is because we're convinced that what we think is gospel truth. We're convinced that that thought is fact. I spend a lot of time with my clients that are like, no, Heather, listen, he really is. Doesn't, he really doesn't care about me. It's a fact. I'm like, no, it's not. It's just thought. Okay. So you put that here. He doesn't appreciate that. I'm trying to make things better in the moment. And then our friend's going to tell us how that makes her feel. And two friend, think about when you're feeling that emotion, when you come up with it, how, how do you act? How are you showing up? What things are you doing? What things are you not doing? We want to just take a really good look at all of this. And it's really important to do this with curiosity and not judgment. You are going to be very tempted to judge yourself, to think that something's wrong with you, that you're not good enough, or you can't believe you do it this way. And that's, it's just not helpful. So I, I always tell my clients, I'm like, listen, just get on your cute little lab coat, get your clipboard and just take notes. Just observe. You're not judging you. You're just being really curious. Like, hmm. I wonder why I'm doing this. Or I wonder why I'm feeling this way right now. This is so interesting. I also tell my clients, I'm like, pretend this is your very best friend. Let's say your very best friend in the whole entire world comes to you and tells you this thing. What would you say to her? Would you be like, dude, you're a freaking joke. Get with the program. 
you're not good enough. Like you would never talk to your friend like that. So it's probably not helpful to talk to you like that. He's dismissing my efforts. So even that, like that's a thought. He's dismissing my efforts. Okay. So I'm going to take some guesses here and say, maybe you feel upset. You feel hurt. You feel angry. Right. And then when you feel those way, the, you know, when you feel those emotions, how are you acting? You're probably not this great communicator. You're probably not willing to share all the things. Maybe you raise your voice. Maybe you ignore him, whatever. Right. And then maybe that result for you is just like, I'm, I'm making things difficult for me. Right. Some, some version of that. I feel dismissed. Yeah. Okay. I feel dismissed. I feel misunderstood. Okay. Great. When you feel misunderstood, how do you act? What do you do? How are you showing up? How are you not showing up? Right. What are the things that you are slash aren't doing? And this work, I love doing this work because it ge- it gives you the power back. It's like, okay, this, this is the circumstance. This is what ha- this, this is what's happening. And then it's like, oh, but look at how I'm showing up. And then I always tell myself and I tell my clients, I'm like, dude, it totally makes sense. Of course you're doing that. Of course I was feeling resentful because look at all of the things that I was thinking. That's fine. That's okay. And when I recognized that later, I was able to be like, Hey, here's the answer to my question. I felt a little embarrassed, felt kind of dumb, but I knew that that was important because I knew that communicating, getting out is going to, is going to allow that resolve resentment to go away. (laughs) She was like, First I was smiling, but then he calls me fake. So I stopped. Okay. So basically what I want you to see though, is listen, when you, when you are misunderstood, I promise you that you're doing things and you're not doing things from that place. And then, then you are getting a result from that. So you, so you can do this to, for, for yourself, but also recognize that other people can't show up in your result line. Like the result can't be my husband still thinks I'm fake because we don't have control over him. So your thoughts, your feelings, your actions create your results. His don't create yours and he can't show up here and vice versa. Does that make sense? Okay. So let me, what's our time here? All right. Let's talk about, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about how to access. Tell, tell me this to you guys, when you're feeling really resentful and upset, it probably doesn't feel probably the last thing you want to do is talk, right? So tell me that. I have a few people tell me this. When you feel resentful, what are your go-tos? What do you do with that? Like for me, most of the time I just shut down. I get quiet. I don't really say anything. Say I don't snuggle with my husband at night. I just, it's kind of just like business transactions. I do what I got to do, but I'm like, I'm not letting you in here. Like, I don't want to talk to you. I'm not going to share the things. And what's funny about that is that keeps me in resentment land because I'm not, I'm not willing to share and get these things out and share this perspective and where I'm at. So it keeps me stuck in resentment. And the other piece of this puzzle that I want to mention half the time, they have no idea. They have no idea that when they came in the kitchen and asked you what you wanted for your birthday, that you were thinking, are you for real right now? This is the first time you've thought about it. This is so hard. I do everything by myself. I'm always holding the baby. I'm always making the food. It doesn't cross their mind. Okay. That's why it's so beautiful. And it's so important for me to be like, Hey, let me tell you something so fascinating about being Heather Flake at 535 on a Wednesday in the kitchen. Are you ready? Let me tell you what it's like. You have to tell them, you have to pull them in and you're not telling them this to change them. I'm telling them this. so I can be like, get in here, boy. Let me, let me show you what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. Isn't that fascinating? So I just want you to know that when you asked me that question, I made it mean this thing. Do you recognize how I'm saying I, you never want to say, Hey, when you, when you came in there and you were asking me these questions, that was so rude of you. That was very insensitive of you. No, we're taking all the ownership. I felt this way. I thought this way. And so often I'm saying out loud, I'm like, listen, I recognize that this is irrational. I recognize that it's not helpful, but also 
this, that's how I feel about it. And now I'm talking to you about it. I don't need you to solve it. I don't need you to whatever. Like I'm saying this to you so that I can clear the ground so that I can start taking the, so I'm shoveling out of the resentful pile. I'm trying to get the mountain to come down. And the only way to do that is to be like, dude, look at my mountain. Let me tell you what's in the mountain. (laughs) Okay. All right. So let's talk about how to access this, how to get yourself to communicate when you feel resentful, because I think for most people, it's just like, yeah, right. It's the last thing we do. All right. So step number one is you have got to understand yourself. You have to understand why you are feeling resentful and your brain is going to go because he's not helping me because he doesn't tell me, thank you. And I do everything for him. Circumstance line, you could put all the things you do in a day, right? You want to get really specific, super factual, vacuum the floor, feed the babies, make dinner, take kids to school. Um, take a crock pot meal to my neighbor who's struggling, whatever you put the things that you do here. And then that thought of like, he doesn't notice all the things he doesn't appreciate me goes here, but you want to understand what you are thinking. You've got to identify the thought that's, that's causing you to feel resentment. And you can do this by just doing, um, a thought download, just writing out the things getting a pen, getting a piece of paper. You can write your husband's name. You can write the circumstance, the scenario, and then just let it all out. Some of us have a lot of shame and we feel like we can't let anybody know that we think these things. It's fine. Don't post it on Facebook. Just get it out. Give these thoughts some airtime. Let them, let them come out of you because amazing, this amazing thing happens. You can see it and be like, Oh, my, my client was telling me that last night. She's like, Heather, I say these things out loud. And I'm like, wait, no, that's not really how I feel. Or or when I say it out loud, I can see that like, that's ridiculous, that that's not actually true. That's why it's so helpful to get it out because when it's up here in your brain, it just feels all consuming and it feels so true and it feels so powerful. So when you get it out on paper, it's kind of like throwing up, you know, when you feel really sick and you're just like, Oh, if I could throw up, I know I would feel so much better. Nobody wants to throw up like that experience is sick. But once you throw up, you're like, oh, like you, you have that relief. That's how it is with your, with getting your thoughts out. Again, no one's going to see them. You're not posting them online. You're not sending them. You're not going to put them under your spouse's pillow, right? Um, you just want to understand yourself. So then, oh, let me make sure we don't have a question. Okay. I will, I will come back to you. Cause that's a really good point. Uh, Okay. So once you get, once you get your thoughts out, you want to give the thoughts credit for your resentment, right? Like detach the resentment from your spouse. Spouse isn't making you feel resentment. Here are the things that are though. These thoughts, this story, they are what is making me feel resentful. And so then you can just decide like, okay, I'm going to own it. I'm choosing to feel this way. Resentment is my BFF right now because of this thought because of these things that I'm thinking and believing. And you know, it's okay. I'm not ready to give it up. I'm, I don't want to think differently. Maybe I'm not even ready to have a conversation and that's totally fine. You just want to own like, Hey, I'm totally aware that I feel resentment because of these things. And it's, and it's not, it's, this is not going to be clean and pretty, right? It's still going to feel like doing spouse. If they would just be more helpful, if they would get off the stupid phone, if they would make dinner sometimes, if they would be romantic, or if they get a six pack for heaven's sakes, whatever it is, right. That tendency to want them to be different, to change so that you you could feel better is going to be really strong. But the more that you do this and the more that you let this percolate and see, you'll, you'll recognize, oh, there's so much power in, Hey, of course I'm feeling this way because of what I'm thinking. And you know, I'm going to stay right here. I still do that often. There are times when I can totally identify exactly what I'm thinking. That's making me feel angry. And I'm just like, yeah, but I want to stay here. I'm not ready to think differently about this yet. This is how I, this is what I'm thinking. It feels very true for me and I'm not ready to let go of it yet. Here I, here I stay for a while. I'm, it's, it's what I want to do. 
Okay, I'm going to bounce in here. We're going to pause and we're going to address this question. Somebody says, can we get rid of the resentment without talking? When I try to talk to husband, he will hold it against me in the future. So again, friend, I would, if I was coaching you, I'd be like, okay, friend, tell me about, tell me about this story of like, he holds it against me in the future, right? What does that mean? And just notice yourself. You're, you are already deciding that you can't talk to husband because he's going to hold it against you in the future. You like, you already have your mind made up. So something you could do is you could think about, okay, in the past, when I've gone to talk to him or really like when you are feeling resentment, have you tried to talk to him about it? And if so, in what way did you go to that chat with, um, like, were you cold? Were you harsh? Were you blaming them? Were you playing the victim? Like, how did you show up? And again, not in a judgment way. You just want to be really, uh, talking is so hard for me today. You just want to really observe you. You want to notice how you have been showing up and then, and then give yourself this opportunity of like, okay, this time, this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm doing it in a way so that I can just let him in. I'm just giving my spouse an opportunity to connect with me. He may not pick up on it. He may not, he may not want that. Right. But when you say, can we get rid of the resentment without talking? You've already decided that like talking about your resentment is a waste of time because, because he's going to hold it against you in the future. Do you want that to be true? And I can hear you. You're like, no, but really like this has happened so many times. I have proof. I have evidence. But, but even so it's like, do you want that to be the case? And then I think another beautiful question is like, okay, so how do you want to get rid of the resentment? If you're not, if you're like, nope, talking is not an option. What else is available to you? How else could you do it? Okay. Friend says he brings it up again. He remembers everything that I've done. He's like my five-year-old. You said this, you did this, even if I said, sorry about it. Hey, let me show you something so beautiful. Those things go here, right? So you could put, I have a conversation with my husband and he, he says, well, you said this, you did this in the past. And you know what? You could just be like, yeah, I totally did. Your memory is so amazing. And you're like, I'm being legit right now. Like you're not patronizing them. You're just like, I think it's so amazing. Your ability to recall all the things. Wow. And you know what? I, I'm sorry about that. I'm so sorry that that's still something that you're holding on to. But right now I want to talk about this thing. And for the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to talk to you about my perspective and how I feel and what I'm thinking. And, and you can do what you want with it. But honestly, I'm having this conversation because I care about us so much. And I don't want to feel resentful. And I know that I'm feeling resentful because of what I'm thinking, but it also feels important to pull you in and to share my world with you so that we can figure this out. Like give them an opportunity, right? Right now you're already, you've already decided like it's not even an option, but even if he does bring it up, you can just be like, is that what I said? Man, I must've been in it that day. I'm so sorry. Right, right now it's a problem because you're you're so defensive about it. But even if it's like, oh, he remembers everything we've done. He said this. You're just like, yeah, I did say that. Not my finest moment, but I love how you remember all the things. It's amazing. <laughs> like how how can you make it work for you? Someone says, should I be saying sorry for the things that I did ten years ago, even though I already said sorry many times before? Do you want to? You don't have to say sorry anymore if you don't want to, right? Like, that's totally up to you. You just get to decide that. You can, you can even, that could be something you bring to the conversation. Like when he's like, Hey, well, remember when you did this? You're like, honestly, I don't, I don't remember that. And, and I mean, how does that feel for you remembering that? And you know, like that was just past me and I love her. She's amazing. But I want to introduce you to present me. Let me tell you about present day me. Like maybe, maybe just trying to really drive this conversation, right? And that's the thing. If you've already said, sorry, yeah, you don't need to say sorry anymore. If you don't want to, it's not even about that anymore. She's like, Hey, I know that you're really attached to past me and I love her too, but present me, 
is going to blow your mind. Let me introduce you to her. Like I always, my whole vibe, my whole jam is like, can we make it funny? Can we bring some humor? Can we make this a little bit lighter? Right. If we can bring in a little bit humor, a little bit of humor, I'm way more likely to be in. It's just like fun. Like if I can clean the kitchen with music on, I'm way more down, right? Like if I can make, make an activity that I don't generally love or isn't that awesome. If I can do something to make it a little bit more fun, I'm way more motivated. I'm way more interested. I'm, I'm definitely going to show up differently. Can you do that in these conversations? What if your husband is resentful? What can I do to make him not so resentful? Nothing. Okay. Listen, your husband probably is resentful. My husband's probably resentful, right? Your husband also is going to feel resentful. Your partner is also going to feel resentful. You're not the only one, right? It's a very human emotion that you are going to feel. Okay. So your husband has their own model too. So if your husband feels resentful, do you know why that is? Because of what they're thinking. Their thought is creating resentment for them. And then all of this stuff, right? So what can I do to make him not so resentful? Are you hearing this? You can't do anything, baby girl. It's not your job to make your husband not resentful. If your husband's feeling resentful, it's because of what they're thinking. So something you can do is you could be like, hey, I've just noticed lately that I've just noticed and maybe point out some of the things that you legit have noticed. I've just noticed you've been really quiet lately. I noticed you've been kind of withdrawn during dinner, wh whatever, like choose your words carefully. Like I've just noticed that you've spent more time on your phone and, you know, compared to other times, are you okay? Like, is there anything that you want to talk about? Are you feeling okay? I've, I've, you know, sometimes I feel resentful and I've noticed that when I'm feeling that way, it's because I have a lot of thoughts in my brain. And sometimes it's really helpful to just like talk about it. Do you want to talk? You know, you can't make your husband not resentful. It's impossible. It's like trying to make your husband or your wife happy all the time. You can't do that. You can't make anybody feel anything. So what can you do to make him not feel that way? Not your job. Not possible. Your husband feels resentment because of what they're thinking. But you can, in a loving way, just be like, hey, here's some things that I've, I've observed. And I'm telling you this because I love you so freaking much. And I just want to check in on you. Is everything okay? Do you want to talk? They might say no. I've been that spouse lots of times. When I've been really struggling, I've felt sad. I felt alone. I felt resentful. And I would be like, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, yep. I just lied. And then the dam breaks. And at some point I'm like, hey, I'm not fine. Can I share with you all the things? Can't, can you hold that space for your person, right? Can, can you let it be okay that they feel some resentment? Maybe it's like, hey, I went to this class today and I learned some things. Let me know if you want to hear it. But I think it's just communicating like, I just, I love you. And I've noticed that you're probably not feeling your best. I'm so sorry. Life's such a beast. It's really hard. I want you to know that I'm in your corner. If you want to talk about it, hey, maybe you're feeling resentful because of things that I've done. I'd love to hear about that too. Just want you to know that I'm here. Because honestly, like moral of the story, summary, whatever, if you can talk, if you can communicate, if you can come together and put these ugly things out on the table, you are way more likely more joy, create more love, create more companionship, more unity because it's out and you're like, dude, let's do this. Let's figure this out. And you know what? Some things don't have solutions. I'm sure you know this. If you've been married for more than a day, not, not everything is solvable in a day or in an hour or in one conversation. There might be things in your marriage that you've been working on for years to try to figure out or to be better at, or to gain more understanding for. But think about the person that's making you guys in that journey. It's beautiful. Okay. So I always just, I always just kind of think if your brain's like, oh, like my husband hates to talk. He doesn't talk. I think of that as a red flag of like, or I just don't want to talk. It's going to be 
it's going to feel really uncomfortable. Okay. It's not going to be fun. It's going to feel bad. But if you can expect that, you're like, oh yeah, this is just going to be sucky. It's going to be awkward. It feels awkward for me every time. I had, I had a conversation last night where I was just like, okay, dude, I'm feeling resentful. Like I need to talk this out. But me even just saying that is like, okay, here we go. And that's the thing. You don't get to decide how your partner is going to respond to it or what they're going to do with it. But you get to decide like, hey, I care about me. I care about them. I care about this marriage. And so if, so I'm going to share these things. I'm going to talk about it. Someone says, can you please teach about how to not get emotional? If I start crying in a conversation, my husband gets super angry, but I can't help the tears sometimes. Honey, you don't need to not get emotional. Okay. And it's totally fine that your husband gets super angry. You see, this is the thing you think you need to change. You think you need to change so that your husband will be different. But it's just like, okay, I, maybe you start crying in a conversation. Even that we can put right here. I cry sometimes in conversations with my husband. What, what are you thinking about that? Right. We, we, you're saying like, it makes your husband angry, but like, what's your thought about it? How do you feel? How are you showing up? Like what's going on for you? And that can just be, um, and I would just be curious about that. Like, why do you think you shouldn't be emotional? Because if you weren't emotional, your husband wouldn't get angry. Like your husband is feeling angry because of his thoughts. And maybe that's just an opportunity for you to be like, hey, like, why are you so upset? What's going on? So I, I can't teach you how to not get emotional, right? But what I can teach you is just to, to understand yourself. Like, okay, why am I? And probably that's probably a really simple answer. Why are you feeling so emotional? What, what are the things that you're thinking that's making you feel these emotions? Then more importantly, what are you making it mean that you do get emotional? What are you making it mean that you do cry when you have these conversations sometimes? Those are the questions that, that I would answer. Someone says, same here. I cry too. My husband shuts down. Then all the attention is on him. Okay. So even again, you're crying, right? That goes here. I cry. The thought is my husband shuts down or, you know, so my husband shuts down and all the attention is on him. How does that make you feel? How does that make you act? And then what's the result that you're getting? Because even that, like my husband shuts down, what exactly does that mean? Like, do they leave the room? Or are they not willing to listen? And I mean, that, that very well could be the case, right? Like we don't get to control people. Maybe they do. I have a person in my life that when they don't like what's being said or they literally flee and it's like, okay. <laughs> so what do you do in that situation? You can only do so much. It's just like, okay, well. I, th I think it's, it's always an opportunity to be like, you know, I'm really proud of myself for saying something. I'm proud of myself for starting this conversation and, you know, something obviously is going on for them. That's causing them to shut down. So I'm going to try to understand me and what's going on for me, but also I'm going to have some compassion. Like if my husband is really shutting down, there, there must be more to this that maybe I'm not seeing, or maybe I don't understand, or maybe they, they don't even understand. And maybe I can present that like, Hey, I've just noticed that you, you tend to do these things and, and even shut down maybe isn't helpful. Maybe it's really helpful to be super specific. Like, Hey, I've just noticed that you go really quiet and you don't really respond. Do you know why that is? Like, do you want to talk about that? Again, just from this like curious, genuine place, not of like something's wrong with you. You need to be different. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying he will, he will put his hands on his face. He shakes his head. He shuts down. He just wants me to not cry. Okay. That doesn't mean you shouldn't cry. You can cry. And guess what? Your husband can put his hands on his face and he can shake his head and he can shut down. And then the really fun question is like, okay, you just know, you know, when it comes time to converse that you're going to cry and husband is going to shut down. 
You could even, I'll even let you, I'll let you have it. You can put it right here. I cry. Husband shakes his head, puts his hands on his face and stops talking. What do I want to think about that? How do I want to feel about that? What do I want to do in that situation? What do I not want to do in that situation? Ultimately, who do I want to be? What do I want to create when that is happening? Do you see that? All of that is up to you. You can't change him. Like that's just how he's acting. And you just think you're just like, oh, well, if I didn't cry, maybe he wouldn't do that. Maybe, but it's like, we don't, we don't know. It doesn't have to be a problem that you're crying. Instead, it's just like, okay, these are the facts. This, this is generally what happens in a conversation. What, what do I want to try? Maybe it's like trial and error. What do I want to do differently this time? And then, and, and two, I would just try to understand for yourself, why, why am I crying? Okay. We have like three minutes left. So I'm just going to give you a couple more tips with something that you can try. So when it comes to talking and especially how we're sharing right now, like for some of us, that's a really difficult thing or our spouse doesn't respond well. So something you can do is you can schedule the talk. Like you can reach out and just say like, Hey, I'd like to talk to you. I know in the past that this is a challenging thing. I know when I cry, that's really hard for you. So maybe giving them time to prepare, like, Hey, this is, this is, I, I want to talk to you. Maybe it's finding a location. Like maybe there's a space that helps you guys feel a little more relaxed or a little more calm. Maybe it's an environment that's more conducive to talking. You can have like a, a literal physical thing like, Hey, when I'm holding this pin, this means like, this is the talking stick. I have something that I need to say and, and I'm allowed to say whatever. And then you're allowed to say whatever. And I promise just to listen and to be open. Like there, there's lots of options. Um, so, and then the other thing we talked about is like, use, use I statements, right? Like you want to own you or when they're asking questions or they say something instead of being defensive, it's just like, you can answer their question. Or if, if something that they're saying has any ounce of truth in it, that's generally why we're defensive. We're like, no, 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 I'm not. No, I don't. But it's like, here, listen to them. And, and there's so much power in being like, yeah, you're right. I do do that. And maybe it's like, I'm trying to work on it. Maybe it sounds just like, yeah, like, I'm so sorry. I know that's something I do. I know that's frustrating. I'm frustrated with it. I'm embarrassed about it. I'm, this is, this is the best that I have right now. Right. Um, and, and then just remember like your spouse can't read your mind. Okay. And thank goodness but you have to tell them in an ownership way, like what's up, where you are at, why you're feeling what you're feeling. And, and recognize that you aren't doing this to make them feel better. You're not having this conversation to make your spouse feel better, to not feel resentful. You're doing this to, to honestly, like to invest in your, in your relationship and to make it a relationship where connection and joy and love can have some breeding ground. Like it can be possible for those things to grow and flourish because you're being honest and open and willing. And, and two, if it's like, if it's the relationship where you feel like you're putting in all this effort and you're trying and you're talking and you're doing all these things and they're always shutting down and they're always doing these things. You just get to ask yourself too, like, okay, who do I want to be in this situation? Is this a relationship I want to be in? Right. Because there again, you're going to get all your power. Like, yes, I do want to be here. So it's like, okay. So you just know, you know, when you're going to talk about things, husband is going to shut down. Who do you want to be? How do you want to think? How do you want to feel? Like you just get to show up in the way that you want to. But honestly, the biggest thing that I want to leave you with is, is the antidote to fighting that resentment is, is to deal with it, is to put it on the table and to share, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. But doing that in a way of where like you are owning you, you're speaking in I statements, you're using a tone, like you've, you've done enough work on yourself beforehand to understand yourself where you're not blowing up. You're not yelling. You're not screaming just because that's rarely conducive to, you know, a peaceful conversation. Okay. I've got a jet. My friends, someone says we tried the talking stick once and he held the stick for so long and talked and talked. I tried to grab the stick off him. It did not work well for us. Okay. But even then you can just chalk that up to one thing that didn't work, right? It's like, oh yeah, the talking stick, that wasn't the best thing. So maybe now it's like, we're going to do a talking stick with a timer, just a timer. And it's like, okay, round Robin, you have 15 minutes. I have 15 minutes. You get to go first. Boom. Like there's so many options and your brain will try to do this all the time. Like, nope, 
we tried the talking stick. It didn't work. Nothing's ever going to work. I'm always going to feel resentful. That was one thing. What else can I try? And, and just from this space of like, okay, I love this person. I love myself. I love this relationship. What else is available to me? What else could I try? But I promise you just being willing to put it out there, to talk about it, to, to communicate is going, is going to tackle the resentment. I promise it's going to start chipping away at it instead of just continuing to let it build. Okay. My friends, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for all of your comments and everything that you put in here. I hope that this was valuable and helpful. If you have further questions or you need some clarification, head to Instagram, Heather Flake coaching, send me a direct message. You can email me Heather at Heather I'm totally happy to help you. I offer a free 30 minute session so you can come, come to me, schedule a free session. And let's talk about the talking stick that didn't work. Let's coach through that. I can give you some more things that you can do. There's, there's so much available to you though. And I would love to further help you to do that. So go to Instagram. If you go to my bio, there's a link where you can schedule that free mini session. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so beautiful to be here with you all. Go pay it forward. Go check out the other great events happening at Life Coach University and just... I know it's not that fun. It's not that pretty, but communication is going to tear down the resentment and you taking time to just understand and love yourself first is huge. So thank you for coming and you guys have a gorgeous rest of your day. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.